That's going to be the frontalis of the epicranius. And so this is going to be the epicranial aponeurosis. And unfortunately, this is very small. It should be a lot bigger, but this is going to be um, the occipitalis of the epicranius muscle. Okay. So we turn it back over here. This circular portion here is going to be the, the orbicularis oculi. And then the one surrounding the mouth is going to be the orbicularis oris. And the one right over your temples is going to be the temporalis. And this one in this area here, very strong chewing muscle, is going to be the masseter. And the one that's going to be uh, going to your cheek on the inside to push food in the way of your teeth is going to be the buccinator. And that's all I'm going to, I'm not going to go through all these little ones over here. But uh, let's look at, unfortunately this one doesn't have the platysma. The platysma is basically going to come just underneath your uh, clavicle, extend all the way just past your mandible. So that would be the platysma going all the way. Uh, that's the one that you can actually make faces um, with. But looking at this little muscle here that begins on the sternum and the clavicle and goes all the way back and attaches on the mastoid process of the temporal bone, this is going to be the sternocleidomastoid. And that uh, is going to be working opposite to your trapezius, which is attaches up here, attaches on the scapula, and also it's going to attach to the spinous process and extends all the way here. So this V that you see here, that's going to be part of it. That's going to be the inferior portion, and then you're going to have the superior portion, and then you're going to have the middle portion of the trapezius. Then you're going to have this nice big wide muscle. It starts, it comes from all the spinous processes here, the top of the ilium, and it goes all the way up here. So you can see it extending all the way back in here, and it is going to attach on the inside portion of the humerus. And that's going to be the latissimus dorsi. You're also going to see underneath here the uh, rhomboid, the major. And you're going to have one right here, which is going to be the teres major. So let's turn this around to the front. And uh, this portion here that actually wraps around from the clavicle to the scapula, this on the shoulder is going to be the deltoid. And then the muscle at the front starting um, from the, the sternum is going to extend all the way and then narrow and attach um, in front of uh, the latissimus dorsi. And that's, this is going to be your pectoralis major. Don't me, I forgot to tell you about the, the teres minor. Or is teres major, didn't I, did mm -hmm. I say teres yeah, major? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so teres major is going to be on the back. Alrighty, so if we continue with this, this is going to be, notice how straight these lines are. This is going to be your rectus abdominis. It's going to be on the abdominal portion. And notice this muscle on the outside, but it's going at an angle. This is going to be your external oblique. And um, that is it from these views, uh, all the upper portion. Let's look at the, at the arm then. Uh, this muscle here is going to be your biceps. But tell you what, let's move to this model here. So let's remove the deltoid. And so if you see, uh, see these two heads? And they come together to form one muscle. This is going to be bi, meaning two. Sep meaning head. This is going to be your biceps. This is the brachial area, so it'll be biceps brachii. And if we remove the biceps brachii, underneath it, we're going to have this nice big belly directly underneath it. So this is going to be the brachialis. The biceps brachii is going to cause uh, flexion but supination. If you remove the supination, the, the brachialis is only going to cause flexion without supination. Okay, so if we turn it around, we can see the three heads, one, two, and three, the three heads of the triceps, okay, the triceps brachii, okay. I didn't tell the class that, but the, this would be your chorobrachialis right here, from here to here, this tiny little thing here, but that's just extra for you guys. All right, so if we take a look at the forearm, and you put your fingers one, two, three, four, 
that's going to be the four muscles that you are going to be working with. How do you orient yourself? Well, if you take a look down here, you notice how this muscle that comes right in the middle, it actually sits on top of the retinaculum, so on top of that connective tissue, and it'll form an aponeurosis on the palm. And so this is the one that's called the palmaris longus. So that's the one right in here, but if you go one, two, three, that's going to be a ring finger. The index finger is going to be your pronator teres, and then the, the uh, middle finger is going to be um, your, um, no, I totally forgot, I'm blanking here. Somebody help me with this. Flexor carpi radialis. Flexor carpi radialis. I didn't quite blank out, but nobody remembers. So, so flexor carpi ra uh, radialis. So it's on the radial side, right? And then palmaris is in, in between the two flexor carpies. So if this is the radialis, what carpi is this one going to be? Ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris going straight down there. Okay? Alrighty, so um, the uh, flexors, the flexor digitorum are going to be underneath, um, so you can actually see it sitting underneath here, and that's going to go to bend your fingers. But that's, um, let me see, make sure you put this one in there, and unfortunately you can't see it. You can see the, the pronator teres, but down here is the pronator quadratus that you can't see because this is in the way. It's going to be, uh, since it's quadratus, what does quad mean? Four. four, so it's going to have four sides, okay? And since it's a pronator quadratus, where's the origin going to be? Think of what the action is going to be. If the action is to do that, where is it going to where is it going to originate? Remember how muscles move towards what? Their origin. Towards their origin. So if it's going to do this motion, that means the origin has got to be. And this one would be more like this. It's going to be in the ulna. Okay, the ulna, because it's going to want to move the wrist this way. Since this is this hand, it's going to, pronation would be this. So in order to move towards its origin, the origin would have to be on the ulna to move towards its origin. Make sense? Okay, so let's take a look at the muscles that are going to make up the, um, the uh, shoulder girdle. Okay, and you're going to have, uh, what's the, the, the way to remember the, uh, those? Exactly. Sits, right? Because it allows the humerus to sit in the glenoid fossa. So what's the first S for? Supraspinatus, supraspinatus right? Supraspinatus because it is above the spine of the scapula. So supraspinatus, and this is the spine. So what is the I for? Inferior. Infraspinatus, so infraspinatus underneath, okay? And then this little guy that's kind of shy, kind of tucking underneath, teres minor, okay? Teres minor, so those are going to be, yep, teres minor. And then this one on the underside of the scapula is going to be called? Scapularis, yep, subscapularis, that's the one. So this big guy is going to be the, the teres major that you can see here, uh, but we talked about that earlier. Okay, so that is it on that one. Let's take a look at the legs. I think we can still use this little guy for the legs. Okay, so um, we're going to have, uh, let's take a look at, at one of the unusual ones. The one that, that begins on the ASIS joint, or the ASIS rather, not joint, but it's going to be what? Comes here all the way down here. Crosses all the way across the leg. So, anybody remember? Sorry. Yes. What is it? Sartorius. Sartorius. Okay. So it begins at the uh, anterior superior iliac crest, uh, spine, and then it goes all the way down and attaches on the medial side of the tibia. So that's going to be the sartorius. Uh, the, let's look on the side here, the coffee muscle. Remember the coffee muscle? Tensor. Yeah, the latte, right? So tensor fascia, because it's going to tense this fascia. Okay. So tensor fascia, latte, right? So this is going to be the iliotibial band of uh, tendon there. This muscle that's right up on top here, what is that one? Part of the gluteus, gluteus medius. medius. Yes, good. Gluteus medius. And then this, of course, is going to be gluteus. maximus. All right. Um, we can't see it in here too well. No, we can't see it at all. The, the strongest uh, hip flexor is what? 
Um, two muscles? The psoas. Yeah. The psoas. The iliopsoas, right? The iliopsoas. Ilia, because it's going to be on the undersurface of the ilium, and psoas, it's going to be attaching on the top of the, uh, the vertebrae coming down. So it's going to actually go all the way down and allow for that crossing, that flexion. All right, so you're also going to have the muscles on the inside, the pectineus and the muscles on the inside of the thigh, which are going to pull the thigh in, which makes them what? Adductors. Adductors. They're going to adduct. They're going to pull the leg to the, to the middle, middle section. And then you're going to have a very thin, straight muscle that goes straight down. And that one, what's that one going to be? Mm. Gracilis. Yes, the gracilis muscle. Okay, then once we start looking at um, these, uh, the, the actual quads, you're going to have four muscles. Another big hip flexor is going to be this guy right here, nice and straight in front of the, the bone. So that's going to be called what? Rectus femoris. Beautiful. Rectus femoris, right? Rectus because it's straight, femoris because of the femoral bone. Okay, and then these big guys here, look at how large this, this muscle is. It comes from here all the way up and it goes all the way to the back here. So it's pretty vast, right? So this is going to be the vastus on the side, lateralis. And then on the inside, the vastus medialis. And if we were to pull off the rectus femoris, in between there you would have the what? Vastus mm -hmm. medial? Intermedius. Vastus intermedius right in the middle. Okay? So. Uh, let's look at the hamstrings on the back. So the hamstrings are going to be made up of three muscles. You're going to have the one on the one single one on the lateral side, which is going to be the bicep femoris. Okay, bicep femoris. It has two heads, so that's why it's the bi, right? So on the other side, we're going to have two that have the same first name, semi. They're both semi, but one has a tendon, and let me see, you can't really see that too clearly on this. The first one that you can see is the tendinosis, and the one behind it is the membranosis. So tendinosis is at the front, membranosis is behind it. So the tough guy is in the front. Okay, so moving down to uh, the back of the leg, the, the sura, you're gonna have the gastrocnemius. You're gonna have the medial and the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. Behind the gastrocnemius, and you can't see that on this tiny model, uh, is gonna be the soleus. The gastrocnemius will flex the knee and the ankle, but the soleus will not flex the knee because it attaches lower. And so that's going to be the soleus sitting underneath it, and it fuses uh, with uh, the, the tendon of the uh, gastroc to become the Achilles or the calcaneal tendon attaching to. So the, the Achilles and the calcaneal tendon are the same thing? Same thing. Okay. Same thing. Okay. And then if we turn and look laterally here, you're going to have your fibularis, because this is the fibula side, right? Mm -hmm. Fibularis, and it's starting way up here, so fibularis longus. And then on the bottom, it comes up with the brevis. So fibularis longus and brevis on the lateral side. And that's the only muscle on, the, on that side. And then if we turn it to the front, the muscle right next to the, fibula, the uh, fibularis uh, longus is going to be your extensor digitorum longus. Okay, and then next to that, you're going to have your anterior tibialis. Anterior tibialis. Okay. If you kept turning, that would be your um, flexor digitorum. And the soleus. So sole yeah, the soleus. You can't see it here, but it would be underneath mm -hmm. the gastroc. Okay. So let me see. Yeah, you can't. Okay, well, you know, they're actually trying to call that the soleus. So this is number 45, they're trying to show that it's underneath there. But the other model would be a better picture. So okay then, that's all she wrote.